in the heart of the Philippines, the rugged tropical landscape echoed with the thunderous roar of engines. Two F-A-50 Golden Eagles, South Korea's latest fighter, streaked across the horizon on their way to their objective, a hostile base full of radical Islamic insurgents. Equipped with tactical data links, ELM-2032 radar, state-of-the-art HUD, and sensors, the Philippine Golden Eagles locate the enemy and attack with precision and lethality. The Eagles swiftly scan the ground below, and before the insurgents can race for cover, they drop their bomb ordnance. The mock-capable aircraft, honoring their American F-16 legacy, leave a trail of destruction behind and turn around, prepared for a second run. When they do, mayhem takes hold of the insurgents, with the Golden Eagle's powerful 20mm Gatling guns and FFAR rockets turning fortifications into rubble. In the blink of an eye, the F-A-50s destroy the Islamist strongholds and return to their base, preserving the Philippines from a rising threat. The Golden Eagle ushers a new decade of affordable yet highly effective aircraft for nations with a smaller military budget, costing around $40 million apiece, representing almost one-third the price of a modern American or European fourth-generation fighter aircraft. In the pursuit of air superiority, the Republic of Korea Air Force launched the ambitious T-50 program in the early 1990s, intending to develop a homegrown trainer aircraft capable of supersonic flight. The trainer aircraft was destined to prepare South Korean pilots for the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Eagle, or KF-16 and F-15K aircraft, replacing the aging T-38 and A-37 trainers. The foundation of this program dates back to the program codenamed KTX-2 from an earlier decade, but financial constraints temporarily halted it. By 1999, the aircraft's blueprint was almost finished. The South Korean government shouldered 70% of the development costs, with South Korean firm KAI contributing 17% and Lockheed Martin pitching 13%. Officially dubbed the T-50 Golden Eagle in February 2000, the fighter had its maiden flight in August 2002. The collaboration between KAI and Lockheed Martin led to an international marketing campaign. At the same time, the Republic of Korea Air Force secured a contract for 25 T-50s in December 2003. Due to Lockheed's involvement in the program, these aircraft were to be equipped with AN-APG 67V4 radar and a General Electric F404 engine, guided by Full Authority Digital Engine Control, or FADEC. The T-50 program evolved beyond the trainer aircraft originally envisioned and included two variants, the TA-50 light attack and FA-50 light combat aircraft. The TA-50 was armed and tailored for light attack and lead-in fighter roles. It was to be armed with air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles, other precision-guided weapons, and even utility pods for electronic warfare and reconnaissance. The F-A-50, on the other side, was envisioned as the ultimate variant of the Golden Eagle, being able to carry more fuel and be equipped with more powerful avionics, such as the ELM-2032 Pulse Doppler radar and engines providing over 22,000 pounds of thrust. In the early 2010s, the ROKAF commissioned KAI to convert several T-50s to F-A-50s. The conversion success paved the way for more orders, leading to a conversion of more than 60 T-50s to the more powerful F-A-50s. Not satisfied with this, KAI's innovation team took it to the next level and commenced the development of more powerful models that made the Golden Eagle a highly innovative aircraft. The Golden Eagle costs around $40 million apiece, representing almost one-third the price of a modern American or European fourth-generation fighter aircraft. The Golden Eagle shares some technology of the American F-16, but it is not its substitute. For instance, the F-16 is Mach 2 capable, while the Eagle can reach Mach 1.5 at the most. Additionally, the South Korean aircraft can only carry a maximum payload of 4 tons, compared to the 8 tons of its American counterpart. Still, the Golden Eagle shares some similarities with the time-tested American aircraft, such as its modern instrument panel making it easier for South Korean pilots familiarized with the F-16 to fly it without issues. The F-A-50 has a length of 13 meters, 
a width of 9.45 meters and a height of 4.82 meters. It has an empty weight of over 6.47 tons and can take off with a maximum gross weight of 12 tons. It can carry two crew members inside the tandem glass cockpit. It has a wide HUD display, digital engine instrumentation, integrated upfront controls, and a zero-zero ejection seat. The crew also has onboard oxygen generation systems and a night vision imaging system for all weather operations. The Golden Eagle can carry an armament load of up to 4.5 tons, including AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground tactical missiles, AIM-9 Sidewinder short-range air-to-air -air missiles, Mark-82 low-drag general-purpose bombs, and GBU-38B joint direct attack munitions. In addition, the Eagle can be mounted with an internal 3-barrel 20mm Gatling gun and LAU-3A-192 rocket launcher for FFAR rockets. Due to Lockheed's partnership, the Eagle can also be equipped with Lockheed's Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod that features an electro-optical targeting system that expands the fighter's capabilities with two-color laser spot tracking and other sensors. It is rumored the FA-50 Golden Eagle will integrate Polish naval strike missiles or German-Swedish Taurus KEPD 350K2 cruise missiles with a range of around 18 miles. The original T-50 advanced trainer version has given way to several aircraft variants. For instance, there's the T-50A variant that boasts a fifth-generation cockpit that was meant to replace the American T-38 Talon but lost the bid. There's also the basic TA-50 Golden Eagle in its lead-in fighter trainer light attack version and the more powerful FA-50 with increased fuel storage and ordnance capacity. On the horizon, the FA-50 Block 10 and Block 20 upgrades promise even greater capabilities, from improved targeting to beyond visual range air-to-air -air missions and in-flight refueling capability. KAI's choice of the Phantom Strike AESA radar for the FA-50 Block 20 demonstrates its commitment to cutting-edge technology. Weighing over 150 pounds, this compact radar signals a new era of precision and capability. It is slated for delivery in 2025. As the years pass by, the Golden Eagle will continue to be upgraded, eventually turning it into a devastating yet affordable aircraft for countries lacking extensive military budgets. The first squadron of the TA-50 became operational with the Republic of Korea in 2011 with the light attack variant. The Black Eagle's aerobatic team of the 53rd Air Demonstration Group followed shortly in 2014. During that same year, President Park Gwen hae officially displayed the aircraft to the public, with the ceremony culminating with an F-A-50 flight demonstration. In October, a Golden Eagle test-fired an AGM-65 Maverick missile at a retired ship for the first time, with great success. Indonesia, which had been considering acquiring the aircraft since its original announcement, mentioned signing a contract worth over $400 million with KAI to deliver 16 Golden Eagles. The South Korean fighters were delivered to the Indonesian Air Force in late 2014 and immediately commenced replacing the Hawk Mark 53 aircraft that had proudly served the Indonesian military since the 80s. Indonesia was so satisfied with the aircraft that it announced in late 2021 that it had signed another contract worth $240 million to deliver six additional Golden Eagles and spare parts for repairs. Iraq was the first Middle Eastern country that showed interest in the aircraft after the Korea-Iraq summit of February 2009. Months later, the country opened the jet lead-in fighter trainer competition, resulting in the TA-50's win. In December 2013, both countries signed a deal for 24 Golden Eagles designated T-50IQ, including additional equipment. The first aircraft were delivered in April 2016, and the second batch arrived in May 2018 flying for the first time in late November 2021. Besides Indonesia, the Philippines is also the second country to acquire the South Korean fighter after the purchase of 12 was approved by Congress in September 2012. The acquisition contract, worth $415 million, was signed in March 2014. Delivery of the 12 Golden Eagles began in 2015 and ended in late 2017. In January 2017, 
Two Philippine Air Force F-A-50 PHs led a successful nighttime attack on terrorist insurgents operating in Boutique, Lanao del Sur, in Danao. This was the first combat operation led by the Philippine pilots aboard Golden Eagles, earning them praise and paving the way for a second military operation in June. During the flights, the Philippine Golden Eagles conducted airstrikes against Mauta terrorists entrenched in the outskirts of the city of Marawi. As the five-month conflict escalated against the militants affiliated with the ruthless Islamic State, the Golden Eagles continued pounding them from the skies. The fight against the Islamic freedom fighters continued, with the army and air force slowly encircling them and decimating their lines. In February 2019, after military intelligence pinpointed the Bangsamoro base linked to the Islamic forces, two Golden Eagles were dispatched to strike the base with 250-pound bombs. The airstrikes were conducted in retaliation for a terrorist attack against the Catholic Cathedral of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Bangare Walled City, Sulu. Later, in June 2020, several Philippine Golden Eagles conducted a live fire exercise in Palawan with AGM Maverick air-to-ground missiles during the 73rd anniversary of the Philippine Air Force. In December 2020, the Golden Eagles conducted another successful airstrike against Communist Party members from the New People's Army while commemorating the 52nd anniversary of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Recently, with the rising tensions in the Pacific against China and North Korea, a lone Philippine F-A-50PH Golden Eagle participated in the 2023 Balatikan annual exercise between the United States and the Philippines and sank a vessel with a Maverick air-to-ground missile to demonstrate its anti-ship capabilities. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, NATO has slowly readied itself for a possible continental conflict, especially those nations that share a border with Russia or are close to its territory. Such is the case of Poland, whose geopolitical tensions with Russia have led to a swift military response from Warsaw. The Polish military immediately began sending Krab howitzers, T-72 tanks, Varmata kamikaze drones, Kyorun anti-aircraft missiles, and other assets to the Ukrainian forces. Additionally, Poland embarked on a massive expansion of its military in preparation for possible aggression from Russia. One of the most urgent modernizations within the Polish armed forces was the Polish Air Force. Currently, Poland employs a fleet of over 30 Soviet-era MiG-29 fighters and 20 Su-22 supersonic bombers bound for retirement. Many of these aircraft and their spare parts were sent to Ukraine to reinforce its air force, making Poland's air force even less effective. This led the military to launch a plan to expand its current air fleet of over 50 F-16CD Fighting Falcon multi-role jets with the acquisition of 48 heavily modernized short-range F-16V fighter variants meant for direct combat roles, while its 30 F-35A stealth jets focus on striking targets behind enemy territories. Nevertheless, Warsaw announced in July 2022 that it instead signed a $2.5 billion deal with South Korean firm KAI to deliver 48 F-A-50 two-seat light fighters. According to a press release from the Polish government, the last 36 F-A-50s will be the customizable F-A-50PL Block 20 model, scheduled for delivery between 2025 and 2027. In addition, KAI will establish several F-A-50 service and training centers in Polish territory that will also serve as regional hubs for other South Korean aircraft in Europe. The main reason behind Poland's decision to pass on the American F-16 is the long backlog of orders. The Polish Air Force cannot wait more than a few years due to the imminent threat it faces with Russia's latest aggressions in the continent. On the other hand, the South Korean Golden Eagles have a higher mission availability, are much cheaper, and can be delivered more quickly to affront the rising threat. Although Poland has been the first country to officially purchase Golden Eagles, other countries are considering purchasing the South Korean fighters, such as Colombia, Bolivia, Croatia, Pakistan, Spain, Vietnam, and the United Arab Emirates. For the time being, the Golden Eagle will continue to be upgraded to keep it up to date with other modern aircraft and hopefully attract the attention of more foreign air forces. <laughs>